Hi, everybody. Welcome to Forever 35, a podcast about the things we do to take care of ourselves. My name is Kate Spencer. Mine is Dory Shafrir. And we're not experts. We're just two friends who like to talk a lot about serums on mini episodes. On a tiny mini episode. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. We've got some questions um, all emailed this week. Yeah. But just a reminder, you can leave us a voicemail at 781-591-0390. Yes. We love the voicemails. But if you want to send us an email, it's forever35podcast at gmail.com. Or you can send us an email through our website, forever35podcast.com. Questions, comments, recommendations. We're going through them all and we are trying to bring them all onto the air yeah so we we got a bunch of questions this week we did and we got a few about a specific topic so we're gonna read one of the emails great i'm gonna take it away please do okay here's our first question dear kate and dory I am 38 years old, have two daughters, four and seven, and I'm loving your That's podcast. That's like you. It's, oh my God. I this, wrote this. Did you? <laughs> I wrote in. I didn't know how else to ask this question. <laughs> I have never been thrilled with my skin, even from a young age, but I also didn't put a lot of time and effort into it. Now that I'm inching my way towards 40, I've been trying to take care of my skin more, but navigating the world of skin serums and treatments can make my head spin, which is why I love hearing your thoughts and recommendations. Thank you. I am constantly, I also constantly regret all the sun tanning I did in my youth. Mm. We understand. Yeah. My question is this. In the past year or so, I have had almost half a dozen Facebook friends join Rodin and Fields. As you know, their marketing model is to post about the products on their personal pages, which I find incredibly annoying. But I also have been approached personally many times about trying the products. While I'm sure they are wonderful for some people, especially those with the budget, I am not interested and I need a kind way to turn down these solicitations. Any advice? Hmm. What's your advice? I think you can just say that's not for me. I think you can say it's not for me. Um, I think, yeah, I think just saying like clearly and directly saying no, I think is the way to go. Yes. And it's very tricky because you don't want to hurt people's feelings who you care about. Yeah. It's a very precarious situation to be in. I think we've all been in this situation. If you are a person, specifically a woman with social, with a Facebook page. I think especially moms. Yeah, that's true. The older I get, the more people I know are um, like now employed by some sort of MLM. Well, they're not employed by the okay, MLM. Okay, sorry. Well, whatever it is. Participating yeah, they in it? They sell their selling products. products. Yes, selling products. So it can be very tricky to have somebody who you really love and care about and want to support, but they're asking you to spend money to essentially to support their this business that they're working on. And that can just be awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think just directly saying like, I'm so proud of you. I I support you. And I'm like, I think it's really, you know, this endeavor is really great, but unfortunately like I'm, I'm not interested in the products or I don't have the budget for that right now. Um, can be kind of ways to just say like, Nope, not for me, but I doesn't mean that I don't care about you or, you know, think you're a wonderful person. A lot of times it's not just about the products being sold. It's also about recruiting people to work under you. It's called your downline. And then the people who have recruited you, that's called your upline. And the way it works is the person at the top of the pyramid makes money from everyone under them. Mm. So when they sign up new people and new people in all of these MLM companies have to buy a starter kit, which can range from anywhere from like $50 to LuLaRoe, which sells leggings is like $5,000. Yeah, theirs is expensive. Really expensive. And so the person above you makes money when you buy into it. And like, I find that, problematic anyway i'm ranting no no you have a right this is your platform i really like i i just think if if everything was above board they wouldn't operate in this fashion so what you're saying is that the person who wrote in should just send their friends this episode (laughs) (laughs) what you just said or my answer or send them the link to the anti mlm subreddit (laughs) oh yes that's a spot um So, look, I'm going to cut myself off here and say that uh, there may be the stray good product in 
some of these companies. So what would you say to me if I was like, Dory, I just started selling these products. Do you want to like, they're so great for you. Would you like to buy some? We're friends. I would say, how would you um, handle that? I would first, I would like die a little bit inside (laughs) that you had been like taken in by this. And then I would say, um, I'm really happy with my current products. Oh, that's a good way to say it. And I'm not looking to add anything to my like skincare routine right now. That's a perfect answer for this question. Thank you. Good work, Dory. So yeah, I, uh, I don't know. There's, there's so much more to say about this. There's a Netflix documentary about MLMs that is like really intense. I'm blanking on the name of it. Um, but We'll you link, can you we'll can to it you can educate yourselves about MLMs. Next question. All right. I'm going to do it. Oh, sure. Hi, Kate and Dory. I'm a huge fan of the podcast and have been listening for the past few months from the dreary north of England, Manchester, whilst looking after my new baby, the not so dreary Ted. Oh, I Ted. love this. As a first time mom who's breastfeeding, I have been thinking more carefully about the products I use, in particular deodorant. I was wondering if you have any recommendations for a natural product. I know they have in the past had hippie connotations and been seen as pretty non effective. I've heard good things about the Malin and goats. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Go- I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. Eucalyptus deodorant, but it is pretty spendy. Would love for me and Ted. Eloise. Oh, and her name is so great. I love the and name. And she Eloise. said whilst all whilst. Our British are British. Our British listeners use the word whilst. I, know. I didn't realize that that was a thing. I know. I love it. Oh, um, I love it too. So Kate, you have some thoughts on this. I do. Cause I, I made this switch a while ago. Um, and I also don't know what's available in the UK. So these might be recommendations mm. that I might not apply. So I apologize Eloise if they're not, um, they're not applicable for you. Um, but, Tom's of Maine, you can get anywhere. It's the first deodorant my mom gave me when I was nine years old. And my fourth grade teacher told all the parents that the kids smelled like body odor. Oh my God. Yeah, I came home from school one day and there was just like a Tom's of Maine deodorant in my bathroom. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. And so I'm still using it. I like the lavender scent. It's not like my number one pick, but Mm -hmm. I've, I have it and I use it often and I like the smell. I think it has a good lasting power. Um, and it's pretty affordable and you can get it in a drugstore. Cool. Um, Jessa blades, who's going to be, um, a guest on the show recommended soap Walla. Mm. And then I have used, um, some of these la vanilla, which I got on Amazon. It's spendy. It's like six, 14 to $16 Mm. per deodorant. And I've noticed all natural deodorant tends to be priced higher. I'm currently using Smith's deodorant, which I got in a three pack at Costco and it was $12 for three. Uh, Great. I mean, which is dirt cheap because I think they're like eight or $9 for one stick. But Smith's is another brand that's turning up at a lot of places, maybe Mm -hmm. even at Target, but definitely at a natural food store. And then our sponsor, Milk and Honey, who has sponsored this podcast, has an excellent deodorant. Yeah, I've been using it too. I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is not a sponsored part of the show. It's just that they sent us some of their products to try. And I've been using it. It's a cream deodorant. You have to use it, apply it with your fingers. It's pasty. Yeah. I wouldn't call it like, like it's I wouldn't call cream. it a cream. Yeah. It's, it's more a like a paste. Yeah. And and you just have to wipe your hands when you're done, yeah. but it really, it smells great and yeah. it, I feel dry. Yeah. It's not sticky. Yeah. Um, and I, that, it also masks BO because I don't wear deodorant every day, but if I catch a whiff of BO, <laughs> you put that on, I'll just, I'll just, Pat on some milk and honey paste. Yeah, I've been really, I've been using that, um, yeah. alternating with my Smiths, and it's been, I've been really pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So, so those I, are our recs. Yeah, those are our recs. And I think, um, I would also say, uh, join our Facebook group if you're on Facebook, because I do think this is a topic that comes up a lot. And I bet listeners in there have even yeah, more. Yeah, if you search for natural deodorant yeah. in the group, you'll get a bunch of good recommendations. And I do think it's good to switch. Yeah. Yeah. It might, my, my and aunt. especially no matter what, don't use antiperspirant. That's the big thing. Yeah. yeah. That's the other big thing is like you can get a deodorant at your grocery or your grocery store or pharmacy or wherever. And maybe it's not natural, but at least like you're not putting antiperspirant yeah. in your body. Right. We've got one more question. Yeah. Should I, should I do the, yeah, honors? you do this one. Okay. Hi, Kate and Dory. Thank you for the podcast. This email is about two intertwined topics. 
how to cope when your life doesn't turn out the way you expected and hoped, and how to cope with feeling alienated from most other adult women. The underlying issue is that my late 30s are just around the corner. I am unhappily single as fuck and have been for five years. I spent my entire 20s in what I thought would be a lifelong relationship, but that ended when I was 31, way later than it should have, mind you. I've been on my own ever since and have no romantic prospects. I've not been on a date in three years and cannot recall the last time I was flirted with. Yes, I've tried online dating sites and found those experiences to be even more depressing and esteem crushing than giving up entirely. I work full time, work out, volunteer, and have joined various activity groups and clubs and so on. But ultimately, I spend most nights and weekends curled up at home with my cats. I'm all too aware of how much of a caricature I am. My two best friends who are also single live in other parts of the country, so we do not get to hang in person often. Making new friends at this age has proven nearly impossible. So that's where I am, and it hurts. I wasted my pretty youth with the wrong person and feel like I've lost life's game of musical chairs. Being single with no kids means I'm separate from other people my age, most of whom are in serious relationships at the very least, if not parents with a spouse and a mortgage and in-laws, etc. People may condescendingly say married life isn't all sunshine and roses, but they sure are relieved not to be in my position anymore, which says it all. I feel lonely, left out and lesser than, not to mention frightened for my future or what is left of it. Fortunately, I really enjoy my job, but career milestones and accomplishments have lost their excitement. Without a life partner, the good times aren't as good and the bad times are much harder. I just feel hopeless and ashamed and tired, you guys. Developing a skincare routine can only distract a gal so much, you know? I don't know what I'm asking. I just needed to share that and hope you can just talk about it. Sending you both lots of love and appreciation. Oh, just want to hug you through the podcast line. Yeah. My, I've thought about, I've read this like 50 times and I've thought about it since we got it a lot. And I feel like the first thing I would want to say is like, you're clearly in a space where you just want to, where you have every right just to feel whatever crappy feeling you're Mm -hmm. feeling. It can be very annoying when you're having these kind of very deep, intense, hard feelings. And people are like, girl, like chin up. You know what? You just got to get out there and have an optimistic day. Or when they're like, look at all the great things in your life. Yeah. And it's like, (laughs) fuck off. I just want to, I just need to feel unhappy about this because I'm unhappy. I don't need to solve it right now. I just need to be in it yep. and and be heard that yep. this is and what get I'm acknowledgement. feeling. Yeah. So I just want to, I, I don't even know if giving like advice is a really helpful thing. I just want to acknowledge like your feelings are valid. It sucks. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's like to be in your shoes. Cause I've, I'm married and I have kids and I, I don't, and this is something I feel with my friends who are my age who are single and talk to me about it. Like, I don't know what it's like. And I feel disingenuous anytime I try to like, give advice or talk about it with them. Cause I don't know. I don't know. Um, well I was 35 and single. Okay. Talk to us. And I moved, that was when I moved to LA. Um, I was 35. I lived in New York. I had gotten out of a relationship a couple years before and had dated people like each, each person, Per each guy was like wronger than the next. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, but I guess I think I had like something I needed to get out of my system. But anyway, I moved to LA and I was 35 and single. And um, I also had this feeling of like, okay, like this, I guess this could be it. Like this is not the way I thought my life was going to be. But this is my life now. And I just, I have to, I have to figure out a way where I can be happy with this being my life. Mm. Um, which is hard. And I, and I don't say that to like dismiss your feelings, um, of, of anger or, you know, I, I also was angry, but I think I just felt like, okay, like I, I want a partner, but it might not happen. And, and I, am I going, am I, is this going to be, am I going to feel like, is this going to be like the defining thing of my life? And 
I just, I was like, I don't think it can be, but I also like, I had all these like simultaneous feelings. It was like, I need to, I need to figure out a way where I can have my life where I can feel fulfilled in my life if I don't end up with a partner. So that was like one thing. And then another thing was like, but I also like really want a partner and I don't want to feel bad about like wanting this thing that is like a basic human need. Um, And so I'm going to just, I'm going to like date, like it's my job. Like I really, I kind of got very um, clinical about it. Mm. And went on, I went on 35, um, I went out with like 35 people before I met Matt in a year. (laughs) I just dated, like, I just was like, I'm going on a million fucking dates. And some of the, like a lot of them were just first dates. Right. Some of them were like second or third dates. And then there were like a couple of people who like one person I dated for like a month, but I, that, I mean, that, and I, I listener, I'm not telling you this to say like, this is what you should do. I'm right. just telling yeah. you the way I dealt with it. Um, and yeah, but like, look, I, there could have been a very, you know, there could have been a different ending. There wasn't, it wasn't destined that I was going to meet my husband. Um, I think I just felt like I'm going to just do whatever. Like, I don't know that I was like, this is, this is the priority in my life right now. Um, so I don't know. I like, again, I don't, I'm not saying this as like advice. I'm just saying this is what I did and how I felt at this exact point. Cause I was also your age had also gotten out of a long relationship yeah. that I thought was going to end in marriage and was like, okay, I'm getting older now. I think my, I think things were a little bit different because I had, I think I had more friends who were not married and had kids and didn't, I had more friends who didn't have kids. Yeah. And so I had more of like a social world where I wasn't reliant on friends who were married or who had kids to go out or, you know, so I was able to do that. So, but it is hard to make new friends. Yeah. It's really hard. Um, excuse me. So I, I, I fully, I fully get that. And like, you know, I, I also relate to you in a way because now, you know, we've been trying to have a kid for two years and now, especially at 40, like so much revolves around children. And it's like, I don't like, I often don't want to be in social situations where there are going to be a lot of kids, not because I don't like kids, but because the parents drive me crazy. (laughs) I get that. Because they only want to talk about kids. Yeah. Which I'm not like, that's not a judgment. And that's, that's totally normal and natural. But it's like, I've, I've been in situations where I will be somewhere talking to someone I'm friends with. And then the second another parent comes and joins our totally group. I think I've done this. It immediately turns into like, Oh, do you have kids? Oh. And then it's just like, blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Oh, I, I've done that probably a million times, which is totally normal because that's like a common thread that people have. But I immediately like, I feel like I shrink back, <laughs> you know, <laughs> very ex- exclusive. And, and it, um, it's like clicky, but not trying to be clicky. totally. It's, it's that's what I, yeah. yeah, I'm not saying it because I, I think people are doing this maliciously no, or even no, deliberately. It. It's, but it's just like, and then I just finally was like, I don't think I want to put myself in these situations. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. This is all just to say, I hear you. I commiserate. Um, I also think if you're not in therapy, I would, I would try to go into therapy just to like process all of these feelings. Yeah. I think that's actually great advice. Um, the only thing, the one thing that stood out to me a lot in this email is her mention of like what's left of her life. Yeah. And the thing that it made me think of was my dad because my mom died when my dad was 55 and he still had so much of his life life left and he has remarried and my stepmom who he married had never been married before she didn't have children she was 46 when they met she's nine years younger than my dad so so i think about them often as two people who found each other Mm -hmm. 
but both later in life, both, I think like, I don't know as much about my, if my stepmom had like ruled out that she wasn't going to meet anyone. I don't, I don't think so. She dated a lot and had relationships, but I just think she hadn't found her person yet. Yeah. And, and I think about my dad who is, you know, they've been married for five, it'll be six years. I can't even remember now, six years and, and have a really lovely relationship and are really a team. And I've so, you know, like I, I just, I thought of that. I, I feel like you do have so much yeah. of your life left. And I, and I know it doesn't feel that way. And I know it's probably not at all helpful to hear me say it, but I just, um, I wouldn't count yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think, and also you sound like you are such an amazing person. Yeah. You volunteer, you have a great career. You have a lot to offer, not just a partner, but the, but all of us. Yes. So I we're thinking of you. Yeah. Um, so, all right. I think that, I think that does it that for, does for it. this week's mini app. Um, and again, if you guys want to reach out to us, you know where to find us. Thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Talk to you next week.